Hello fans of Agile Coding. Today I want to talk about performance tuning of REST services. In the past, my team was building a new web shop application and we built also new APIs for it. And um, some days or weeks before our go live, we really faced serious performance issues. So that's why we had to do a performance tuning before we go live. And I want to share with you the learnings which we gained during this tuning because it was really interesting and a lot of fun for the developers to do some tuning. Yeah, maybe not for the product owner that our system had really this issue. But let's get started and go into the details. Our end-to-end -end testers reported that the application is too slow. The first thing we had to do is to check, is this really reproducible? We have been surprised by it. So after a while, we figured out when you put four different mobile tariffs into the shopping cart of our application, then it gets slow. That is something we, of course, improved before we go live. But to give you a better understanding, I will switch now to the browser and show you the application and what it means to put a tariff into the shopping cart. So here we have the business customer uh, web shop of Deutsche Telekom. I can order now a tariff like um, this one by clicking this button. Then I have in the next step to customize the tariff. A tariff have, has a lot of options you can buy. Um, so I will skip it. And when I click on this button, I will add this tariff into the shopping cart. And the shopping cart is a REST API, which we had to tune. Yeah. So before I do this now, let's open a different web shop of some randomly chosen competitor. So now on the left side, you see our famous competitor and you can also buy mobile tariffs there, which are of course not so good, but let's see how the purchase process works. I put this um, now into the configuration place here. I can also choose about the options compared to same as, as we had. And if I click now on this button, I will put this um, tariff into the Vodafone shopping cart. And here I will put our tariff into the telecom shopping cart. So let's see this, click and click. And let's see who wins. Our application is loaded, the shopping cart is filled. And after some while, Vodafone did the same. So that was not, would have been not fast enough for us. That's why we did this kind of tuning. And I will share more details about this now. So we had to analyze why it is so slow, why it was so slow on our side. Yeah? And um, by looking into the gateway locks, the gateway is between the web shop application and our shopping cart API, we noticed, okay, there are really some slow requests with over 10 seconds if you are calling the shopping cart API when you put four different tariffs into the shopping cart. We started to do a first analysis about which operations are so slow and we figured out whenever we have to read the database and write the database and also get latest prices via our price API and our product catalog management API, so the combination of those two things is doing a validation of the shopping cart and a price calculation. That are details, but yeah, whenever we call the shopping cart API, we have database interaction and interactions with different APIs. And that took us in cases, some cases more than 10 seconds, that's too slow for us. So we started to improve it. After understanding which operations are too slow, we understood also when it is too slow, when we have more than four tariffs and why. Yeah, the reason is with four different tariffs, um, the shopping cart data structure in JSON representation gets really big because yeah, a, shopping, a tariff is not just one item in the shopping cart. It is a bunch of items because it has so many different options like multi-SIM, a roaming option and so on. Yeah, So we started next to do a brainstorming um, to gather as much ideas as possible how we can improve this situation. And yeah, in brainstorming you get always a lot of ideas, but you shouldn't now start like crazy. You should work in a structured way 
And you can do this by creating tickets or subtasks for each idea you have. So um, you should also define a goal. Our goal was that the API response of the shopping cart API has to be faster than one second. And in order to achieve this, we had to deal with our um, subtasks about tuning. But what is the best place to start? Therefore, we did some prioritization of our tuning tasks. And we did this by looking at three different dimensions. The first dimension is the tuning potential. That means if I do this change, how much faster will my application become? That's, of course, at the beginning, some kind of estimation. The same for the effort. If I do this, how much work will it be? Or how expensive will it be? In the case of adding more CPU to a server, we will have low effort, but high monthly costs in the future. And finally, don't underestimate the third dimension, the risk of side effects. Performance tuning is always complex and there's always a big chance that you introduce new stuff when you do complex things in code. So I will give you two examples. One is add more CPU to a server. That was one idea. The potential could be big. Yeah, If you are under load, you double the hardware size, um, then you are you double the speed. Yeah? So there is a potential of this idea. The effort is low. It's just a configuration in the cloud to get more CPU. Of course, you have to pay for it, but um, the effort is low. And the risk of side effects is also low. Yeah, More hardware, hardware will probably not introduce a bug in the code. So that was rated good. But unfortunately, this. Uh, so we started also with things like this, but um, this kind of tuning can fail and it failed because our server was not under load. It was just slow when it had to interact with the database and wait for the response of the APIs. Yeah? So that was our real problem. And that was why this didn't help. So we did also some other things. We had also some other ideas which we didn't do. Like our database was a relational database, but the shopping cart API is returning always a shopping cart. And a shopping cart is really a big structure of um, classes and, and child elements like shopping cart has a card item, a card item has a product, a product has a specification, a product has a price, a price has sub attributes and so on like text and, and all that stuff. So it was really a complex data structure and that was the reason why in general the selection of a relational database for shopping cart API was not the best idea we had in the beginning of this project, but changing it now some weeks before our go live or days before go our live into a different database uh, is on the one hand a lot of effort and the other hand a big risk of side effects. So choosing this was also one of our last options which we didn't take because we found better things. At some point you will be fast enough and then you should stop the tuning yeah, to not risk more side effects, as I explained before. We did, as I said, a shopping cart database tuning by using the MariaDB JSON column, which is some step into the direction of a NoSQL database. But you are still on the relational database, so that was an intermediate thing. And of course, it helped us a lot. If you are interested in the details about it, please leave me a comment, yeah, and then I can explain things like this in a follow-up video. That is something I will quickly explain. Yeah, So here we had some logic tuning, like looking onto the business logic. It says, okay, we get a request from the web shop. We read in the database. Then we call another API to calculate the prices. We write the result in the database and then we send back the response to the web shop. That has a waiting time of this size. And you can change the business logic, like getting the request, reading from the database, then calculating the prices and giving this result back to the web shop. And in a parallel asynchronous thread, we store the data in the database. This is faster, as you can see here. So it is a performance tuning and an improvement. So we did it, but you have to check the side effect. And that's very important. If we would get a second request before the writing in the database is completed, it might be an issue. In our case, we checked this and it was not an issue, so we could go with this and ignore the side effect. But my point is, 
be aware of side effects. Tuning like this one can produce side effects and that might be in your case really an issue or a follow-up blocker bug. Next thing also with potential side effects, so that's why you have to check it. If you have three requests in a row and um, you have three times the waiting time and you might end up um, sending all three requests, three requests in parallel as here, then we have way shorter waiting time. But of course that works only if all three requests are independent of each other. If the second request re needs the result of the first one, it will not work like this yeah, and it will be probably a bug. What you can also do if you are sending a lot of requests to backends, you can introduce a cache. Um, check out the description. I will give you there a link to an instruction how to use in Spring applications a cache. And that is exactly what we did to introduce here a cache in the price API so that we have less requests to the PCM API. You can also tune on the client side. Uh, one way is to avoid unnecessary requests. The fastest response is the response you get for a request which you didn't send at all. Yeah, <laughs> then you have zero waiting time. Another kind of tuning is on the client side to check if you can send a different request which produces less effort on the uh, server side. Like here we had in the beginning two requests which both calculate triggered the price calculation. So it was changed on the client side to trigger the price calculation only with a second request. Yeah, Here it was some kind of unnecessary um, price calculation because the user in the browser um, had to wait for both requests until the browser is refreshed and something new is displayed. And uh, yeah, removing this duplicated price calculation is, is a reduction of waiting time for the user. Let me come to the summary which summarizes the learnings we had. And the first one is really the cause why we have been in this situation. In the situation where we had to do the tuning a few weeks, a few days before our go live. Um, during development of the shopping cart API and price calculation API, uh, we worked with test data created by the developers of the shopping cart API team, which had just 100 lines of, of JSON. But our client, the web shop, was developed in a different team and they needed, um, they produced data requests with 60,000 lines of JSON. So that is way bigger than the 100 lines. And for 100, we never had any performance issues, but with um, a size of 160 times bigger, yeah, we have been in performance trouble. So you can avoid this by using realistic client request data for your API development as soon as possible. Next learning, before you start to tune, measure the performance. Um, by measuring the performance before you start coding and tuning, you can see if you are really tuning a place which is which matters, which is slow. Sometimes developers see code, see, look at code and they think this is inefficient. I'm doing here unnecessary things. I can do this shorter, quicker. But this kind of, uh, of code is not doing in any interactions with backend systems or a database. So compared to sending a request over the network or making a complex database query, this code is, is really fast, yeah? And of course you might end up tuning it from 10 milliseconds to one millisecond. But if the overall time of the request is one second, this kind of tuning does not matter, yeah? So measure the performance before you change so that you ensure that you are tuning at the right place. And then measure the performance after your change. That is the only way to see that what you changed had really an impact. If you don't measure afterwards, yeah, you might end up committing things to the master branch, which do not help from a tuning point of view, but have the risk of introducing new bugs and side effects a few days before your go live, probably not a good idea. Here is a short code snippet um, about how you can measure the performance. Yeah, we introduced an add measure performance annotation, um, which is taking the time from the beginning until the end of the method. But you can make also your life simple by just introducing here 
uh, a counter system current times in millis um, before uh, the request or the, the statement which you want to measure then here we have the thing what i want to measure and afterwards i take again the current time in millis I subtract the value of before and then i see the milliseconds which have been used for this line of code and this line of code was about the request from the price api to the pcm api let's say that was 500 milliseconds and here the stuff around like do other crazy stuff or do more crazy stuff it was bad code it didn't look good but it didn't matter yeah because the overall time of this um, method was like 520 milliseconds yeah so um, tuning here is the place where, where you have to do something to bring your system in more speed um, you should tune always only one thing in our situation yeah we had really to work here 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 and here so at four different places we need more than one guy because we have seen this early that we had to have to improve at many places and that's why we worked in the structured way but in best case you can just focus on one thing tune this and and ensure that this was successful yeah? and if it was not successful uh, reject it um, don't um, merge it to master yeah as i said before um, yeah because the main reason for that is performance tuning have a big risk of side effect when we changed um, the relational database uh, MariaDB to use a JSON column instead of only classic relational tables and doing all the joins. Yeah, um, we introduced side effects, and those side effects have been blocker bugs, which we had to fix afterwards. Yeah, the performance tuning was worth the trouble, but uh, yeah, anyways, it has trouble. And if I would do a tuning which has minimal impact and doesn't really help, but is also pro producing side effects and it's probably not a good idea yeah um, one more thing if you test the result of your performance tuning test it like a customer uses the system so for example if i do a performance tuning at the database and the time at the database is reduced from three seconds to a half second that's great yeah but it might not help the user at all or a lot because if the user is waiting in the um, web shop for eight seconds and three have been the part of the database and this is tuned to a half second he's still waiting five and a half five and a half second which is way too long yeah as we said at the beginning we want to have a waiting time of one second yeah so test the tunings as the customer uses the system because that is at the end the truth um, for your clients and they matter most and finally when you are fast enough when it is fast enough for the user for your product owner then stop the tuning it has always those kind of side effect risk and if you are under pressure you don't want to risk critical milestones or the go live just to deliver some nice to have tunings that's it that are our learnings about performance tuning. If you liked my video, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. So, see you next time. Bye bye.